Alrighty guys, how's it going? It's ever seen here. So unfortunately we died. Um I'll go over the rip clip here in a second, just showing you kind of what happened, and I totally deserve the death, to be honest. No more deals. Just good Nope. Nope. Oh, I'm dead. Ah, oh, GG. Fuck. Oh, fucking logo macro would have saved me. Alrighty. So let's talk about the death. Um, totally avoidable, in my opinion. And probably yours too, but I'll just go over what happened. So I'm doing a betrayal, and there's a fortification going on. Basically, a tormented spirit spawned right near the door, if I can catch it here. So it's there. I thought, hey, I'm just going to kill this in time. It's not really a risk. Well, what happened is Leo teleported literally right in front of the possessed spirit. Got possessed. Became really fast. I noticed it right away, so that's why I went around. Decided, you know, I'm just going to try and fight him. I think I can kill him. I get enough damage. But, uh, sadly, I didn't kill him fast enough, and he just chased me down. So I see him, he's coming in there, so I get out. He's there, I'm kind of stuck now. I'm like, ah, shit. Didn't expect him, he stunned me as well. So stunning is kind of something that I was talking about before that I'm scared of. Because, uh, this character doesn't have any immunity to it. So, he's chasing me down, I'm like, okay, I can flame dash away. I should have went down in that hallway, probably. But I decided to go there, and then I was going to try and just loop around. But he's teleporting to me constantly. You can see my granite flask is about to run out. This is where I, I'm like, I got to log out. And I hit log out, and my granite flask is gone. I don't have my sentinel up, and I just get one shot, which is fair. 3,600 life, really not a lot of life. I didn't have a lot of armor on the character. Um, so yeah, basically this death, even though it happened, I think it was warranted, it needed to happen, and I learned a lot from it. And this was my first run with this build, so it actually helped me out quite a bit. Uh, my character right now is also not that strong. Um, he's only 3700 life, and uh, about the same gear. I have a little bit more damage this time around, and I've got a couple defensive layers that I want to talk about. Okay, so let's go over the gem setup first, because this is kind of what I have been running, what I'm trying to run instead. So with the helmet, I got Flame Dash, Feeding Frenzy, Blink Arrow, Prismatic, Termination. I wanted to use Feeding Frenzy and Blink Arrow without the Guardian's Blessing and Haste, because I needed a lot of sockets and I, I just vetoed those for now. I'm probably going to go back to that. Yeah, because I'm using Ensnaring Arrow now and Mana Forged Arrow. So Ensnaring Arrow is basically like attempt chains. Like it'll shoot an arrow at a target and it'll slow the target. So in that sense, like where Leo's chasing me there, if I was able to cast Ensnaring Arrow on him, I might have been able to escape. So that's kind of my thought process behind having that instead. The current setup right now is Bama, Fresh Meat, Volatility, Mini Damage, and Concentrated Effect, which now now, since I've took some uh, critical strike chance and multiplier on the tree for minions, I'm going to swap this out for uh, crit multi, but I'm just leveling the gem right now, and then precision just to have a, a fill slot there. Uh, my ideal setup is going to be Bama, Fresh Meat, Volatility, Mini Damage, Increased Critical Strike Multi, and Ellie Damage with Attacks. For the boots, it's the same setup with the Arcanist brand. For my gloves, I've got a different setup going. So I have a Summon Stolen, a Stone Golem of Safeguarding. This is uh, one of the new Transfigured Gems, and I was watching a video with Kaparian uh, where he was kind of explaining he was going to quit the league, and I noticed he's playing a Golem build, and I was like, okay, that's interesting. And then he went over this gem in his video, so I'm going to go over that in a second and show you guys kind of my thought process. But basically, we have that. We got Minion Life. We've got Meat Shield and Ray Spectre. And then Purity of Elements, Determination, and then we're trying to get this set up in. We don't currently have it in. And then uh, this, you can just, that's not even uh, applicable. Um, so for the bow, the old setup I had was Prismatic Clones, Haste, Guardian's Blessing, Feeding Frenzy, Flame Dash Precision. I 
kind of swap this around i took out these two gems i put in snaring arrow and mana forged arrow my new bow just has a bunch of extra gems in it so i've got pure developments and snaring arrow mana forged arrow uh, call to arms and enduring cry so these are like some optional setups that i'm going to opt for it's like in snaring arrow mana forged arrow the haste guardian's blessing and then i need to get i need to fit in the cast and damage taken molten shell somehow i'm not sure yet we're gonna go over the stone golem tech so the stone golem uh basically the way it reads is that it takes melee damage from its life before yours so the base uh amount is 15 percent, but we can actually scale this up to upwards of like 30 percent so the way it works is it has 50% less uh, maximum life. We're going to use meat shield so it takes less damage because we don't want this guy to die. That's kind of the whole point of it. And it's going to have 20% increased buff effect from the quality. And then we can get an Exarch implicit for boots, which can be between 31 and 48. 31 is the lowest roll, which is what I'm kind of using to use it as, as an example. And then we can also get Exarch implicit for chest piece, which is 19 to 36%. So in total, effectively at the worst rolls we could possibly get for our Eldritch currency, we can get 50% increased effect of our golem, which in turn is going to be like 30 percent because right now we're sitting at 16 percent and that's just because i have a little bit of quality on the gem this is a big tech for the build because we're lacking in the physical mitigation department slash uh, armor department like we don't have a ton of armor so this is going to help us this is kind of a lesson that i learned from when i died uh that this tech would be um kind of of use and this brings me to the next little tech that i'm going to use which i think this is going to be good for many many builds i don't think it's just good for my build um and it's the enduring cry call to arm setup this feels super good for overall recovery it goes hand in hand with our ascendancy which gives us 100 percent life regen over one second uh which i'll show right here every four seconds regenerate 100 of life over one second Every time Enduring Cry goes off, we get Endurance Charges. So we get three Endurance Charges. We get 2,000 Life Regen and Physical Damage Reduction. So the Enduring Cry buff itself lasts about four seconds, which will give us additional Physical Damage Reduction per Endurance Charge and Elemental Resistances. So investing in quality for both Enduring Cry and Call to Arms will have a net cooldown recovery rate of 34% because we get 40% from Enduring Cry, and then once you quality uh, Call to Arms, it's like a 6% reduced cooldown recovery rate. So we can also get Eldritch Implicits to make this shorter. I think it's like upwards of like 20% for uh, Enduring Cry, which is going to make it go off a lot uh, faster. And every time the setup goes off, it counts as a spell, which will give us our 50% spell block, which will in turn help our glancing blows. So between Flame Dash and Enduring Cry, we're effectively like never going to not have spell block. So that's really good. And I'll just show in game. So I have it turned off right now because it is quite annoying to just listen to. But uh, let's see if I can just look at the defense tab for a second. If you can see my life regen, every four seconds it goes up to 4,000. So right after it ends, I want to press call to arms. And of course it's going to get skewed and whatever, but I try to at least do it like on the off where I don't have any regen. I want to have Enduring Cry go off. So it's going to go off. It's going to end. Then I'm going to activate Call to Arms. So I get 2,000. Then I get 4,000. Then I'm back to 200. And Enduring Cry goes up. Now I have 6,000 because they both decide to go off at the same time. So that's what I'm talking about with the timing. If you can get this even better, you can actually effectively have it. So Enduring Cry is constantly up. And you can sustain Endurance Charges as well. So this is another big help for if I was going to die in that clip. This is going to help out my build a lot. So another thing about this setup is we can actually opt for taking uh, deep breaths, which is only um, one, two, three, or five points, which is going to give us an insane amount of cooldown recovery rate. I have not tested this yet, but I think that this may be beneficial to completely sustain enduring cry and have a lot of re life regeneration so as you can see we get 12 uh 27 32 we get 60 percent increased cooldown recovery rate 
So this is going to help us greatly if we decide to path this way. Unfortunately, we are a bit tight on the tree, so I'm not sure if I actually want to use this yet. But yeah, that basically sums up this character. I am currently level 85, back to where I was. Uh, I'm trying to get spell suppression gear. I'm basically trying to get to level 90 so I can buy expedition bases and start crafting. Um, I need a better bow. This bow is not good. I need more base flat damage. Uh, more flat lightning damage would be preferred. But yeah, we have good spell suppression. It's about 76. So we just need a little bit more. I'm hoping to get some blight oils so that I can anoint quick step, which gives us, I think, 12% or 10% more suppression. So we're almost suppression capped. Um, and now we've got two more defensive layers that I feel really good about. And yeah, so something we did different with the tree this time around is uh, we decided to go for the minion crit. Um, I think going into crit early is the option here because getting the ailments from the critical strikes is really good for Bama, especially the freezes because everything just shatters. And I definitely prefer using the crit. I decided to completely unspec out of this entire area. I don't really want this area because I want to invest it more into this side of the tree. And Eldritch Battery, I've decided I just do not need. So we are just going to stay clear from Eldritch Battery and we're going to stay in this area of the tree. And then we're going to grab like a jewel here, a jewel here, another jewel here. Like we're just going to invest in a lot of minion jewels. And then the goal is to kind of get a darkness enthroned to replace this garbage belt. And we will be set from there. Okay, so Atlas plans. I know I haven't progressed. I haven't finished my Atlas yet, but... Harbinger is looking really good, and Abyss I have to farm anyway. So I'm thinking uh, with my second Atlas tree that I'm going to fully invest in Abyss first, and then I'm going to do Harbinger second because I want to get Fractured Orbs for that 10% uh, Fizz Taken as Fire mod, which if we get that on a helmet, plus the 6 or 8% I believe it is, then we've got decent mitigation because we've also got the uh, Mastery for 10% of Fizz Damage Taken as Chaos. The only thing is I need a little bit more chaos resistance to make it super effective. So yeah, basically we need Corrupted Abyss Jewels too, because I want to try and see if I can get a mod of immunity to Corrupted Blood. This would be amazing for the build. And of course the Darkness Enthroned, and if we can get extremely lucky, we can get Anumanu's Gaze, and then start pivoting maybe towards a Poison variant. But overall, I'll show you guys kind of my pathing for Abyss. I only have 50 bonus objectives right now, so we're just going to go up, grab Abyss. Abyss chance. We're going to get more monsters. We're going to go for those uh, corrupted Abyss jewels. And then we're going to go up here, grab more monsters, more experience. So this is going to be really good for leveling quickly. And then we're going to path all the way up and grab all of these nodes as well. So as soon as I finish this wheel up here, I'm going to start investing into some Harbinger nodes. And that's about it for the update, guys, really. Uh, there's not too much more. I haven't had much time to progress. I probably should be a lot farther, but of course I died and you know how hardcore is, so... Um, but I hope you guys get some ideas, maybe some defensive layers. For damage, uh, I think really the main goal for your damage is to get as much flat damage on your bow as possible. Uh, the minion deals 84% increased damage works great, but it doesn't work great if you don't have good flat damage. So I know grave crafting has been really good for getting flat damage on bows. So I would definitely look at other people doing some elemental bow crafts where they're getting all the T1s. Uh, I think flat damage for this is going to be insanely good for damage. But yeah, guys, that's it for me uh, on my update. Sorry, I'm not better progressed. <laughs> uh, I just I died and I have a full time job, you know, so I'm trying to just kind of get back on my feet right now. I'm just getting to the point where I was. Um, it's unfortunate, but uh, you know how it is. So another thing I chose to do this time around was I leveled with Armageddon Brand all the way till Merciless Lab. And then I farmed Merciless Lab to get Blink Arrow again, uh, or Mirror Arrow if you will. And so basically I wanted to do this because Normal Lab is just a pain. And Merciless Lab will give you, you know, your maps, your scarabs, and just overall map gear to start mapping. So that was kind of the idea. I'm pretty sure I dropped uh, like this ring in there, so... Really good to farm Labyrinth in Merciless. Definitely not normal. Would never recommend it again. But uh, I may upload that leveling run. I'm just uh, not sure because I didn't completely finish it to Katava. So 
But yeah, guys, if you want to see me kind of progress and screw around, I'll be live on Twitch after this video is uploaded. So come on over. Peace.